Raised in a fringe religious movement? Secret biolabs? A Russian plant? Just what is Tulsi Gabbard's whole deal? Tulsi Gabbard's parents were acolytes of the Science of Identity Foundation, a counterculture religious community founded by spiritual leader Chris Butler in the 1970s, according to Intelligencer. Butler founded the belief system as an offshoot of International Society for Krishna Consciousness, or the Hindu Hare Krishna movement near Kailua, Oahu. There, Gabbard's parents brought up their children under the Guru's guidance, an alchemical mixture of Hindi practices, Catholic strictures, and 1970 ideals of strict vegetarianism, scientific skepticism, body and spirit dualism, criticism of consumerism, strict sexual mores, and intense homophobia. You see, the body is just a, like a pair of clothes we're wearing. Our real identity is we are spirits, we are spiritual beings. Though the Science of Identity Foundation describes respect for people of different races, ethnicities, or religions on its homepage, its founder Butler has received negative press for Islamophobic commentary. In 2019, Butler was quoted in a video posted to Twitter as saying, The Mohammedan philosophy, Islam, is so full of violence, it's so low class. It's so Mickey Mouse, it's so violent, you're completely allowed to kill all infidels. According to The New Yorker, Gabbard referred to Butler as her spiritual guide in 2015. But Gabbard has since been publicly silent about the SIF leader, conspicuously refusing to identify the spiritual group as a major influence. Tulsi Gabbard attended Leeward Community College to study television production, but did not receive a degree. In 2002, she ran for the Hawaiian State Legislature and became the youngest person to represent Hawaii's 42nd House District at 21 years old. Gabbard withdrew from seeking re-election two years later, instead volunteering for the U.S. Army National Guard. However, her name remained on the ballot, as she had already filed to run. At a 2004 Honolulu press conference, she said, My fellow legislators have assured me that they will cover for me, that they will be involved in my district to make certain that the people of my district are well taken care of while I'm on active military duty and in Iraq. Representative Rita Cabanilla eventually won the seat. Gabbard would go on to earn a bachelor's degree in international business in 2009 from Hawaii Pacific University. From 2008 to 2009, Tulsi Gabbard was deployed to Kuwait, where she became one of the first women to enter a Kuwaiti military facility. This achievement not only broke with tradition, but earned her an award of appreciation from the Kuwait National Guard along the way. The U.S. Office of the Historian notes that Kuwait began a relationship with the U.S. even before it was a country. An American consulate first opened there in 1951. Though Kuwait is a constitutional emirate ruled by the Sabah family with executive power shared with an elected assembly, according to the Kuwaiti government website, the state is Islamic and therefore guided by Sharia law. According to the Egyptian Islamic Advisory Board, Dar al-Ifta, the Quran states that women can work as long as the job is safe, suits women's physical and mental makeup, and is deemed permissible by Sharia law. Gabbard's Kuwaiti service broke at least two of those strictures, forging a path and a record of women in the military in a Sunni Muslim nation. I love our country. Tulsi Gabbard grew up practicing capoeira, a Brazilian martial art that blends dance, music, and acrobatics. And she is also fluent in other martial arts. The former representative suggested that this lifelong practice helped develop her rebellious stance in a tweet, I started practicing martial arts as a kid and trained capoeira for many years, an art that originated with slaves in Brazil as a form of resistance. Gabbard is such a mixed martial art fan that she helped former UFC women's strawweight champion Zhang Weili overcome visa issues to re-enter the US. While how much of a role the representative played in greasing Zhang's way is up for debate, the partnership led to an unexpected friendship. The pair even sparred for the cameras upon Zhang's 2019 return to the States. Zhang posted on Instagram in 2019, Today I had the honor to meet and train with Miss Tulsi Gabbard, and she is a very strong martial artist. It is a happy day when martial arts brings people together. In 2012, Tulsi Gabbard became the first Hindu member of Congress. In 2013, she became the first elected congressperson to swear their oath of office on the sacred Hindu text, the Bhagavad Gita. Gabbard said of the experience, I chose to take the oath of office with my personal copy of the Bhagavad Gita because its teachings have inspired me to strive to be a servant leader, dedicating my life in the service of others and my country. My Gita has been a tremendous source of inner peace and strength through many tough challenges in life, including being in the midst of death and turmoil while serving our country in the Middle East. The daughter of a Roman Catholic father and a Caucasian Hindu mother, Gabbard's first name derives from the Sanskrit word for holy basil, 
which Hindus regard as a sacred plant. Gabbard believes that these non-traditional roots do not hinder her political aspirations. She told The Atlantic, Absolutely, a Hindu can be in the White House one day. When you look at the national issues that our country is facing, people are not qualified or disqualified because of their spiritual practice. People are looking for someone they can trust. Tulsi Gabbard is an outspoken opponent of the entire Washington, D.C. power structure. On September 13, 2022, she tweeted, There is indeed a serious domestic threat to our democracy. The unholy alliance of permanent Washington, the national security apparatus, big tech, and the mainstream propaganda media to target tens of millions of ordinary Americans as domestic terrorists. This broad condemnation has earned Gabbard some contradictory political bedfellows. She resigned from the Democratic National Committee to endorse Bernie Sanders in 2016, and she spoke at the 2022 Conservative Political Action Conference. Liberals love her fierce environmentalism, and conservative Republicans celebrate her critical stances on homosexuality. Politico reports that Gabbard supports progressive issues like single-payer health care and a $15 per hour minimum wage. However, she is a regular guest on Fox News shows criticizing President Joe Biden, especially his foreign policy decisions associated with Russia and Ukraine. While guest hosting Tucker Carlson tonight, Gabbard informed her Fox News audience that Attorney General Merrick Garland's actions in raiding former President Donald Trump's home at the Mar-a-Lago Club have, quote, all hallmarks of a dictatorship. The FBI's raid on Mar-a-Lago changed the country that we grew up in. In September 2019, then-Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi announced a formal impeachment inquiry after a whistleblower charged that sitting President Donald Trump solicited political favors from Ukraine in exchange for $400 million in aid. Pelosi said during the announcement, The actions of the Trump presidency reveal the dishonorable fact of the president's betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of our national security, and betrayal of the integrity of our elections. In an unexpected move, Tulsi Gabbard only voted present in a referendum that fell almost completely along party lines, with only two Democrats voting against impeachment and zero Republicans voting for it. Article 1 is adopted. This party line vote, Gabbard indicated in a lengthy statement, was the very reason for her abstention. While she indicated her belief that Trump was culpable, Gabbard decided to voice her concerns, labeling the impeachment process as, quote, fueled by tribal animosities that have so gravely divided our country. She wrote, My vote today is a vote for much-needed reconciliation and hope that together we can heal our country. I am confident that the American people will decide to deliver a resounding rebuke of President Trump's innumerable improprieties and abuses, and they will express that judgment at the ballot box. Just a few months before Tulsi Gabbard would decline to seek re-election to Congress to pursue further political goals, she made a stand for her fellow veterans, sponsoring an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act to allow military members to consume hemp products. On Monday, July 19, 2020, the House of Representatives voted 336 to 71 to approve a package of multiple amendments to the NDAA, including Gabbard's amendment. Gabbard's addendum to the bill was a response to the Department of Defense policy banning the use of hemp products by active duty and reserve members of the military despite hemp's legality under the Agricultural Improvement Act of 2018. While on the Jimmy Dore show in 2019, Gabbard expressed that the restrictions on hemp products was detrimental to a wide array of citizens. This is affecting our veterans and those who are locked up in our broken criminal justice system because of this prohibition. Technical procedures for delineating between marijuana use associated with the psychoactive chemical THC and the non-psychoactive CBD are still being hashed out. At present, however, all military departments will issue punitive general orders from the still prohibited use of CBD and other products derived from hemp, according to the Department of Defense. Tulsi Gabbard expressed her advocacy for decriminalizing any and all drugs during her presidential run in 2020. In a 2019 interview with ABC News, she said that the choice to use drugs should be decriminalized, but selling drugs should remain illegal. That's the direction that we need to take, is decriminalizing uh, an individual's choice to use whatever substances that are there. When interviewer John Stossel pushed Gabbard to elaborate, she maintained issuing criminal penalties against people who sell these street drugs, even if they're declared legal, saying, I think there's a difference here where you have those who are profiting off of selling substances that are harmful to others, as opposed to those who are making those choices on their own to do what they wish with their bodies. Though her fellow Democratic nominees like Pete Buttigieg offered their support for decriminalizing drug possession, Gabbard went a step further in proposing to make all drugs legal with regulation. 
She stood on board the same platform as her peers and using this legalization to wean people from prescription drugs. In her February 2019 campaign launch speech, Gabbard said that we must stand against the criminal justice system, which punishes individuals but allows corporations like Purdue Pharma to escape without criminal punishment for its role in the opiate epidemic. Tulsi Gabbard is no stranger to tangling with the establishment in Washington, D.C. Almost exactly two years after Hillary Clinton called the congresswoman a Russian plant, Senator Mitt Romney accused her of spreading pro-Russian propaganda. In March 2022, he tweeted, Tulsi Gabbard is parroting false Russian propaganda. Her treasonous lies may well cost lives. Romney's tweet was in response to a March interview with Tucker Carlson on Fox News, in which Gabbard expressed that she was worried about supposed United States-backed biolabs in Ukraine. She followed this up with a Twitter video claiming there were more than 25 U.S.-funded biolabs in Ukraine. These pathogens know no borders. If they are inadvertently or purposely breached or compromised, they will quickly spread. While a publicly available agreement describes an arrangement between Ukraine and the U.S. to prevent the production of bioweapons, no evidence exists to support Gabbard's and Carlson's claim. This did not prevent Gabbard from clapping back. She tweeted, when powerful, influential people make baseless accusations of treason, they are sending a message to all Americans, if you dare to criticize the establishment's narrative, you will be smeared and discredited. If this is allowed to continue, our democracy will be no more. So Senator Romney, please provide evidence that what I've said is not true and treasonous. In response to the natural gas pipeline leaks coming from the sabotaged Nord Stream pipeline, Tulsi Gabbard continued to lambast U.S. leaders for escalating and sustaining the war in Ukraine after the February 2022 Russian invasion. On Tucker Carlson Tonight, she accused both the U.S. and Europe for taking a passive approach, arguing that leaders from both are taking the stance that there's nothing to be done. In September 2022, Gabbard claimed, the United States, our leaders, and European leaders are the ones fueling and funding this war. So they have a heck of a lot of leverage to be able to push for a ceasefire, negotiated outcome, and an end to this war, and to actually fight for peace. Gabbard did not hesitate to label political inaction as a purposeful continuation of the conflict. In the same interview, she elaborated that, by not actively pursuing a peaceful resolution, politicians were instead actively choosing violence and warfare.